Good morning, Shavua Tov, Agotavach. Thanks for tuning in to the Kiyot Shari Torah Halach Daily Halacha Review. Uh, we are now on Monday, October 12th, uh, which is Thanksgiving Day here in Canada. So happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Hope everyone's enjoying the day uh, and perhaps even some nice weather. Uh, we're, now that we've uh, uh, completed the uh, cycle of high holidays and uh, their attendant halachas and customs for the year, we're going to go back to our uh, previous topic of study, which was this book series by Rabbi Moshe David Lebowitz called uh, Halachically Speaking. Uh, the subtitle is Hard to Find Halacha for Everyday Living. So there's a number of uh, points that we go through. Some of this is going to be reviewed because we have uh, covered it in past years, but I think a little bit of review will certainly not uh, hurt us at all. Remind us of some things that uh, we may have overlooked uh, in the years since we've, uh, since we've uh, uh, reviewed these or even learned these. Uh, the, uh, I'll start with uh, a chapter in volume one. This is a multi-volume set here. I think it's seven or eight volumes now. Uh, there's a chapter called Preparing Oneself for Davening. The Gemara in Shabbos, uh, which hopefully we'll start learning soon, relates that different chachamim, different sages, perform different activities in preparation for davening based on the verse in Amos, the prophet Amos, which says, prepare before calling to out to your God. You should uh, prepare. That's a necessary part of, uh, of davening, is getting ready for davening. Just like you dress carefully and prepare extensively for a special meeting, let's say with a head of state or a sovereign, similar care, no less care, I think, uh, should be taken to prepare oneself for davening. Uh, in addition to that, tefillah davening is in place of a korban, in place of uh, uh, bringing offerings in the temple. Just like Kohanim wore nice clothing when doing the avodah, doing the service in the temple, we should also take care to wear nice clothing when we daven, we make ourselves mindful of that. So under the heading, subheading of wearing proper garments, uh, Rabbi Levowitz writes, one should not daven without socks, uh, even if you're wearing slippers or clogs or crocs, one's shirt should be tucked in. Short sleeve shirts and short pants should not be worn while davening because one would not wear this sort of attire when meeting an important person. If you live in a place where short sleeves are worn in front of important people, then you may wear this kind of garment for davening. Uh, so if you live in the Bahamas or uh, in Israel or somewhere where uh, they do wear short sleeves and maybe even shorts, who knows, uh, so then you can wear uh, that kind of clothing for davening also. One should not daven while wearing pajamas or a bathrobe, although a person who's not well uh, could certainly is allowed to daven while wearing pajamas. One should not daven in dirty work clothes if it's at all avoidable. Uh, last point he makes under this section is that a woman should remove her apron before she davens. Uh, I'll just add a corollary to that, that if a man is wearing an apron, he should also uh, remove it before he davens. Okay, next point is wearing a hat and jacket. Shulchan Aruch uh, says that Chachamim and their disciples uh, wrap themselves up before they daven. What does that mean to wrap themselves up, to put on some kind of extra garment? Uh, Mishnah Brura, uh, writing in the early 20th century, writes that one should wear a hat while davening. The post can also say that this applies to wearing a jacket, even if you're married and you're wearing a talus, in those communities where people and men start to wear a talus once married. Uh, if you do not have a hat for davening, you should not take someone else's without permission. Uh, if you normally wear a hat and jacket for davening, not everybody does, and you find yourself without it, you should not daven without uh, unless there's no later minion. The jacket sleeves should be worn, in other words, actually put your arms through the sleeves rather than just draping them over your shoulder, as some yeshiva bachram sometime do. Some poskim say that one who does not normally wear a hat and jacket in the street need not wear it for davening. Tzitz Eliezer, Rabbi Eliezer Waldenberg, just passed away about uh, 10 or 15 years or so ago, uh, is of that opinion. Many are lenient with this, with this issue. Uh, nevertheless, you will see that many who consider themselves b'nai Torah uh, do in fact wear a hat and jacket. So says uh, Rabbi Belsky, Rabbi Yisrael Belsky. Uh, who's uh, frequently quoted in the course of the discussions in this Sefer. Okay, so uh, you have a little bit of that. Uh, tomorrow we'll talk about uh, covering the head with a talus during davening. Please join us for that. Have a good day. Again, happy Thanksgiving. All the very best.